And we are live. Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Comedy Cellar Nightly, that we do here nightly. We're here tonight with Chris Red, Damian Lemon, Cypher Sounds, and the beautiful Rosebud Baker. And uh, I know I don't know who, who's booking the show. Liz is booking the show. Like one night, it's like five white guys. And then it's, I mean, it's a little offensive already. Like, what's she doing? Yeah, I don't want to. No offense, but I don't want to be on Urban Night. Yeah, it's like. Damn, that's I, think I, I think I feel. <laughs> I'm, a full, I'm almost a full white man now. I go to therapy. And everything. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so you have crossed over, Chris. I love <laughs> this. It's the only thing making my fiance uh, jealous. What, right now, it's two two blacks and a Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah. uh, he has a tattoo like that, actually. Um, uh, so, so right before we started, you guys were talking about how, like, I was telling you how I'm gonna kind of let myself go. I'm not, you know, keeping up my hygiene like I should, and and you didn't understand. Simon doesn't understand that. Simon, you look, no. you look like the cover of a magazine. What's going I don't, on? I don't, I see all these rappers and comedians online, and their beards is, oh, oh hi, Damien. The beard is all out <laughs> and the hair is crazy. Like what your clippers still work or you could go buy a razor and just clean up. This is a political statement. You oh, know what I mean? That, that's oh. what it is. I let the people know this is a pandemic. You know what right. I mean? Right. I understand back in history with the Spanish flu, they didn't have the technology that we have right. now where you could actually get a pair of clippers delivered on Amazon and just trim. I'm talking about Yeah, this. but it's like if you if you are walking around with a fresh haircut right now, it's the same as like not wearing a mask. Everyone knows mm. that you you went out. You did nah. it. That's I just did it myself. But that's, Hi, why, but that's why I put Hi, a, SD. SD. That's why I put a hat on though, because I, I hate that I expose myself that I could shave my own head. <laughs> I like I like right. other people doing it. That's part of success. <laughs> I, I think it. I think it's a mood thing. I think like you know, you you clearly are not depressed by any of this sci-fi. I, I can just see it. You're glowing. You're happy. In the dark too. We're, we're growing up. Sci-fi's on a weight loss journey. By the way, is that, is that Miles Davis on that sweatshirt? That is. That's for. Uh, that's a cool sweatshirt. Go up a little higher. I want to see the whole thing. Oh, that's dope. Oh, that, that is, yeah, that's a famous dope. picture of him. Oh, that's Supreme, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. So, so the anyway, money you could have, the money you could have spent on Clippers, you spent on Supreme hoodies. Right. Absolutely. Because <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> Miles ain't look at Miles, look at his line. You know what I mean? That, his line's crazy. His you know line's crazy. He has he has a lining of a man who's either a legend or a crackhead. Can't right. Really go. right. It could go either way, but you're interested. Either way. Yeah. yeah. Miles Davis is awesome. Did you read his autobiography? Yeah. So he's a pretty interesting guy because. You know, he, he didn't he didn't care much for white people, but but he 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 was very um, objective about music. And like so he had the highest praise for Frank Sinatra. He would say he used to try to play like Frank Sinatra sang, you know, mm. which is an amazing compliment coming from Miles Davis. Very, yeah. Really, really interesting guy. I read it years ago. I kind of want to read it again. Maybe it's a good thing to read during the during the. That's the funny you say that because I'm a huge Frank fan and Frank was trying to imitate the trombone that his band leader used to play. Mm. Like the reason why Frank Sinatra sounds so different than any other singer is because he was trying to emulate a trombone with his voice. Well, Jimmy Dorsey and also Billie Holiday. He said, Frank Sinatra said that Billie Holiday was his biggest influence yeah. and you can kind of hear that, you know? Yeah, you do hear it. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Sinatra was a, and now he turned out to be Ronan Farrell's father, so. No, I gotta read yeah. more books. We knew, yeah. we all knew that, right? <laughs> I'm sitting here like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you have Cypher, you know, Cypher's into music. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, so who's depressed? Nobody's depressed? I'm is, depressed, yeah. Is, isn't SNL on? Is SNL on the air? Uh, nah, it's, 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 it's off now. We all for this. We all for the summer or forever. I don't know what's happening. Not, no, forever. No. not forever, not forever. Not forever, nah. But, oh, uh, the season they officially did, uh, ended it. Yeah, they, they they did three at homes and and then yeah. we're, we're we're kind of we're done for the summer until wow they hit us up. We had a shoot from the crib. Yeah, so uh, that shit was weird, bro. I was running out of space to shoot shit. Uh, I mean, man, this one bedroom in New York gets smaller every day, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, You're so, depressed, Esty? Yeah, look at Esty. Yeah, I'm I'm getting there. 
What's the matter? Does anything happen? No. You in the house by yourself, Christy? I had enough. It just, it goes in waves, man. Like, I try to be productive, but then, you know, the, the, these moments hit you where you get really sad and upset. I drove by the cellar the other day because I went to the Ace Hardware across the street from the Village Underground, which is still open. Are they open? I, Ace Hardware is, yeah, it's like an essential. And I drove past the cellar and I just stood in front for a while and just stared at it. Dude, I, I did that too. Oh, I did that too. Really sad. I did that twice already this month where I just went and stood there and was like, the yeah. first time I did it, we like texted Liz and I was like, is there like a corporate happening? What's going on? And she didn't think that was funny. And then, um, <laughs> and then I, uh, the second time was, uh, I just went down and sat on the steps for a little while with Andy and uh, Che and Makala. And we just sat down there for a little bit. It's, it was, it's sad. I think last week was the toughest for me. I don't know. I felt like a lot of people were feeling it last week. This week's a little bit better. Why? Uh, I started writing more. I think that's why I just started writing again. And um, that makes me feel better. But like last week I, I had to fire my agency and I had to, I mean, why? which was because why? they, they had to, they basically, like had to lay off 20% of their staff. And I was like, all right, well, that's three of my agents. So I got to go. Who, who was your uh, agent? WME. Yeah. It's sad. They're great, but I, I just, you know, it's like, I don't have anything coming up. So it, it had to happen. And I was it just, I, it sort of started a thing. Right now it feels like we are, just about around the corner where everything's going to be open. Yeah. So, yeah, but not, like, not like, us. Not you know, us. You know, Wait, so no. I mean, no, I, well, I don't know. That, my feeling is from what I'm listening to the news and the governors and what they're opening yeah, they're not, really quickly. But they're not. But they're not talking about entertainment spaces. That's the well, scary part. Had Jeff Dye, he is already doing live shows around the country. Utah, Utah, man. We're, we're living, we're living in Wuhan, or, or you know. Uh, what's yeah, but th then he, next week he has uh, somewhere else. I mean, around the country, the clubs are opening. Yeah, up. around the country. I'm yeah. scared. Yeah. New York. Well, in all the, in all those on places. one hand, on the other hand, since they start I will, relaxing, I will say relaxing this, the rules a little bit. It, the, I, the, the I, numbers start starting to go up, so who knows? I know, but I will say I, th I think comedy will open up a little faster because at least we can do half capacity and space people out, as opposed to like nightclubs where they try to get everybody as tight as possible in there. Right. Yeah, yeah, but the restaurants are opening. I mean, I really feel like it's around the corner. What do you mean around the corner? I feel like it's a long corner, but I don't think we're open until uh, so this is uh, going to June, July, or September, maybe. But you, you, Noam, do you get anything from like the government, like saying when your business can open or anything? Like, do you know inside information? No, nothing. I don't know. Well, I mean, just the Jewish stuff, but nothing from the government. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, I, I don't. I don't know anything, and um, they, we we don't zoom our meetings. We, uh, uh, I don't know anything, and um, there is nothing. They don't know. They don't. Know. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know. Such, uh, I, I hope I'm gonna. I just... will tell you this: every day there's new things out there which seem to imply. It was just a big thing on uh, a big study that came out today that really seemed to imply that if everybody would wear a mask, everybody, yeah, we could actually all go back to work. And still the virus would go down. And I'm not sure why. I know it's a pain in the ass to wear a mask, but it's better than this shit. No, definitely, it's definitely yeah. not. It's not even bad. Like, I'm fine with it. And I'm and I'm happy. I'm happy not having to touch hands with people. Like, it's great. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. Say, they say that. It's interesting, like, you know, that um, if, if one person wears a mask and then another person wears a mask, it the effectiveness is not double. It's the average effectiveness squared, which which I was reading about, which means that actually, even though two people wear rags over their faces, yeah. it's actually more effective than one person wearing an N95 mask. So right. it, it really works. Yeah. And for some reason, they're playing games with this shit. Just give me a mask and let me go back to work. But I don't think they're going to do it, so.
there were like headlines about t- talking about how people are attaching it to like weakness. Like if you wear a mask, then you're weak, or or or, or some or it's some. It's all messed up, though. Wear, Come on. Well, I mean, this you know this is good. where like, this is where our leaders really are failing us because Trump should be wearing a mask, Cuomo should be wearing a mask, everybody should be wearing a mask. They should lead by example. I don't know yeah. why they're not. Uh, yeah. Whatever. My yeah. mask popped yesterday. I was in the streets and I had my mask on, but then one of the things popped so I couldn't wear it. I had to go down the block with no mask on. I felt like a villain the way they were looking at me. <laughs> yeah. It was it was tough out there. No, I judge niggas. <laughs> I judge niggas for real, bro. <laughs> yeah, what? I mean, I, when I see people with no mask on, I'll be like, yeah, all right. So you just that sure? That's how you gonna do it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think you wear a mask like all the time. Like when I run, I don't wear a mask. Nah, see, I don't. Why? Because I'm not. I'm not conversing with anybody. I'm not near you're anybody. Breathing hard though. You breathing yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spreading it. yeah, you wilding out. Son. There's nobody there. Just you. <laughs> yeah, you up. And I keep it with me, and as soon as I stop running, I I tie it on. Because when you stop running, you breathing hard as shit, and all that what corona is in the world. All that droplets, all them droplets are spreading around. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah but Saif, I went, I tried to go running with a mask on, and to your credit, that was hard as oh, fuck. Oh, super I, hard. I can't it's breathe. It's so hard. Man. You can't yeah. breathe. You're just like, I, I thought I was going to pass out. Yeah. Like, I tried running with the mask on, and I was just like, I felt I was getting fabric in my throat. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's it does sound like Bill. For sure. It sounds unhealthy to do. 100%. Get it? Yeah. I think they got to get those antibody tests up. Because once you find out if you had it or not. Chris think, got oh, it. I got one, y'all. I just got one. And oh, yeah? Yeah, bro. And I, and, and I ain't had it. And I ain't going to lie to you. I felt like I felt like I was better than everybody as soon as I found out. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. You think you're in a higher <laughs> class than me? I, I, swear, I swear to God, my, my, my credit score went up as soon as I found out I ain't had it. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't you, wouldn't you rather you had it? I would rather uh, have had it. So, so so here's my thing. Yeah, like you, 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 you I would have rather have had it and had the antibodies and know that my body can just work and I'm, I'm asymptomatic. But I also like the fact that everything I've been doing is working. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like that I, I'm quarantining the fuck out of this shit, bro. So, <laughs> so I know that like, I can get Chipotle and it's fine, nigga, because that wasn't killing me. Because there was a couple of times I got a delivery where I'm like, that nigga looks suspect. I might have it, you know what I mean? Right. But, yeah. Proof, I, yeah. You know? I said, it, yeah, I, I, I want to get the test, but I don't want my wife to see my other antibodies. So I think that I'm going to have to do it <laughs> 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 You're, not, You're like, Corona is the least of my problems. <laughs> <laughs> got some other immunities you should be happy about. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else? So what, was it, what was it like doing SNL from home? I'm sorry I didn't see those shows. What was it like? Uh, it was fucking nuts, man. Cause like you gotta be, you gotta be the director, you gotta be the caterer, you gotta be the produ- producer. Oh, so it gotta- wasn't it wasn't live? You taped all the pieces. Yeah, we had we had a pre-tape all of it. Yeah, right. and, and, and and then you have to shoot it at like separate times because they have to like the editors, man. They 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 deserve all the awards for that shit, yeah. man. It was yeah. so many editors on, like on there going crazy, trying making that shit look good. But you know, I had I had to ask people like YouTube how to like mix certain shit like just stuff i didn't really know how to do before yeah. so i mean i kind of learned a lot of sh- a lot of shit because of it Did they, and I have, like, a it, was good, it, it was good it was good yeah uh, I, I i enjoyed it I gotta watch. Did they send you like? Did they send you like cameras and equipment and all that stuff? Bro, they sent me. They sent me so many high power lights, bro. I, I, mean, <laughs> I, got, I got a ring light on right now, nigga. I don't think I turned it off since I got it. Like, <laughs> I would have never had a ring light, and now I got a ring light, and I stay with a ring light. I you can't. look, you look <laughs> so nice, man. Bro, I'm telling you, I, I, I know how to angle this shit now, nigga. I, I YouTube it up. Wait, <laughs> hey, you got a ring light? Nigga, I got a ring light. Yeah, I know you do, Safe. You got a ring light? Nah, I got this. My old DJ light I used to use. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, What's wow. a ring light? What's a ring light? I got one. I'll show it to you. Wait. It, it's round at the cap. Yeah. Boom, it's that. Oh. And, and I got that's... one of these. I got one just because I, I got, I booked this like commercial and they shot, they sent me the ring light to shoot the commercial with. And uh, I'm not, I don't want to send it back. I'm, I'm going to hold on to this as long as I can until they're like, hey, send us that. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm gonna hang like, on to it. Like a lot of like a lot of YouTubers and stuff use those ring lights for like bad lighting in their apartment and like they they yeah. was ahead of the game. All those YouTubers, bro, bro, they was ahead of the game. Yeah. I had to salute them, bro. I, I had to salute them. I'm like, y'all been Man. doing all this work, nigga. Y'all, y'all ain't tired, yeah. bro. <laughs> that shit is tiring, cuz. Yeah. Exhausting. So what else? What about all the politics of it? What do you what do you guys you guys have any strong feelings about all that I, stuff? I feel like I don't even I think you just pick your side. You know what I mean? Like I look at the politics, I look at these little addresses, like the papers and shit. I fuck with Cuomo. I don't deal with de Blasio as much anymore. I definitely don't watch Trump. I let Cuomo kind of, you know, do what he does. It, it, it's cool, you know, but after a while, I just think that after a while, everybody's just doing spots. It's not even new information. They just, they just want to get in front of you and say some other shit. So yeah. <laughs> I don't tune in as much as I used to, but you know, if I do, I fuck with Cuomo pretty much over everyone else. I do like that Cuomo has defined what nipple ring energy is for everybody. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand that. Please explain. He's got I'm a nipple saying, ring. Like, he got a nipple ring. He got nipple. He got double nipple rings, and and the man's handling business, bro. You know what I'm saying? You talking about Governor Cuomo or Chris yeah. Cuomo? I'm talking about the governor. <laughs> He's got nipple serious? rings. Yeah, I think so. I think he got nipple rings. Supposedly. <laughs> what? How do you know that? There was a picture of him where it was suspect. Yeah. He was wearing where, he was wearing a white it, shirt. Could, yeah, you could kind of see the you could oh. kind of see the rings. It was a thing, bro. I've been reading too much, but I've been reading a lot probably, of no, he, he, he was wearing this white, he was wearing this white shirt. It looked like he had breastfed someone before. Yeah. Like it was it was nah, he probably had he probably got like EKG. Like you're probably like gonna have a heart attack soon. Man, oh, I would his, no, he's from New York, he's Italian. Thing, is, is oh, he nipple. does look like he's got something. I'll, I'll bring it up. You can probably see it. What the fuck is that? Yeah, bro. <laughs> Ooh, I was like, yeah. that man got nipple rings. Yeah. The secret life of oh, wow. nipple rings. Ah, like oh, man. Nipple rings. Yeah, that, he got something. <laughs> he's either got nipple rings or he has three nipples. Two on rings. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he got the herpy nip. <laughs> so, and what what about i mean i just heard today that um what what, what do you guys feel about the, the all the the unfair death certificates black people yeah. twice as likely twice as likely to die from covid what do you what do you I, wa I watched i saw something today about um they saw the highest uh, the highest uh, areas with the most corona it was like brownsville brooklyn somewhere mm -hmm. up in the bronx and then like uh, a part of queens on the queens yeah. Corona Queens has the highest. Corona number. Queens. This number two. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. It's wild. It's, 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 it's Chicago. That's because it, he, it, that's why they they were talking about the economic level of of uh, black and brown people. Yeah. That the, the Corona has a lot of um, Spanish uh, immigrants. A lot of immigrants there. And they have let's say one bedroom and five six people, and they're yeah. living very uh, close quarters. Yeah. And so and Corona is number one and Brooklyn's number two. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. I'm like, I know I haven't lived in the hood in a long time, thank God, but I know how people act in the hood. Like I know they're not listening to all the rules. I right. know they're not. Because the rules ain't been made for them, you know what I'm saying? Which which yeah. is crazy. That that that's the yeah. systemic part yeah. of it. But then it's also yeah. like fuck the mask, you know what I'm saying? Fuck the yeah. I mean, I got I, I, I see, I'm in Harlem, I'm not even in like I'm not even deep in Harlem and I saw two niggas fighting about staying six feet from each other. Bro, yeah. and, and, and that shit was wild, and they both had no mask on. I'm like, well, well both y'all wrong immediately. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but people it, are being very uh, cavalier about it, and and they don't believe that what what the government tells you about the numbers and and oh, it's a big conspiracy or this or that. The fact of the matter is that you have. Thousands of people sick, thousands of people die. It's not a game. Yeah. Some people think that they're really above all of that. Yes, the, yes, the. I, I'm sure that I'm sure that at, at your, what your cipher is describing is real. I, I also hear the stories, you know, from my wife's family who who live in, in, in some of those neighborhoods. But the poor people are also doing 
the shitty jobs for yeah. shitty pay that are considered essential. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No living, and they're living multi generationally quite often. Yeah. And no question. But transmission yeah. within the house. Is, like I can tell you, my house, if one person in this house had it, everybody was going to get it. There's just no way. We have a big house. Can you imagine being in, a, in yeah. an apartment? I mean, yeah. exactly. Oh, it, it's really kind of, it, it's tragic. I, I'm sure that habits contribute to it. I, I don't doubt that. But it's also just, it sucks to be it's, poor. It just sucks, you know. It's all its all of those things combined. And It's okay. Sooner or later, we we'll all know how it feels to be poor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I feel it now, but it but it exposes the country's weakness for caring about the poor and this and and and, yeah. and who they turn their back on. It it really just exposes all of that shit. <laughs> yeah, Listen, is that, there are places. Places. Well, I don't know. I don't know if they're turning their back on it. I don't know what we can do. Also, um, uh, a lot of the poor have uh, more obesity, so that and and more diabetes. So it just every like from every angle, every it's angle, worse. it's it's the worst. It's just yeah. the worst. But I don't know what. The country could do. I mean, it's not like the country saw this coming, but I don't know what, what they who they really did turn their back on was the old people. You know, yeah. uh, in, in some other countries, what, what I think Hong Kong didn't have a single person die in an old age home, not one. And we had three, almost four thousand. That's like the most heavily populated place. But this, but, but this society is way more strict though about about everything. You know, what I mean? about I mean to to have people shelter in place in China is a whole different thing. From 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 out here, you know what I mean? Like wearing masks is the thing out there. They yeah. mask up, you know. It's yeah, they didn't have this kind of thing before. So that so they're yeah, so the they're, thing about Americans is that we won't no one is everyone's like, don't tell me what to do. That's right. like right. the the most American Which is sentiment. Crazy. We're Which the is rebel crazy. country, you know. We, That's we it. are rebels to, to the well, to what's the, the no and what's the political part of it? Like, why do like they like did did the Republicans think this was a, a Democrat? scam at first I no so. I, I i mean listen i mean like how is it how is so it a political thing there's some the, the thing that trump has done which bothered me the most because i think in some of the things he's done were kind of meaningless like we didn't run out of ventilators and whatever but the thing that bothers me the most and this is throughout a, a wing of the Republican Party is that they're kind of encouraging this kind of civil disobedience. Yeah, I, I noticed that. While at the same yeah. time, they're pretending they're for it. And and that's really unforgivable for the president to do. I mean, he is the president and he can say, listen, I don't think we should continue with the lockdowns. And in certain states, I think he's probably right. Like, you know, yeah. some, but it's, it's just irresponsible for him to say that he believes in these lockdowns and then like tweet out free Michigan and stuff yeah. like that. Just, that's just, and, and I mean, it's, there's plenty of Republicans who don't think that way. Some of the most Repub uh, some of the most responsible governors like in Ohio, and it turns out yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. have been Republicans and not like, you know, but yeah, there is this uh, wing of this kind of like the MAGA wearers. I don't know. The yeah. I just didn't know. I just didn't know how it became political in the beginning when it, it was a health issue. They, they always find a way to somehow make it. Listen, it's like Cuomo says, I don't want to be political, but the government, da, 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 who is the government? Right. Who is he talking yeah. about? Yeah. yeah. And he keeps going back, back and back and back. Come on, take responsibility for your state. There's yeah. a lot of things that the government has nothing to do with it, that Cuomo was putting the rules and how the state of, is there's a lot of uh, consensus now that's really circling in on Cuomo and a lot of big mistakes that were yeah. made. In New York. But well, I remember when everybody in the I remember in the beginning everybody was praising him, and I was in right. LA and we were locked down for two weeks before New York even got the direction to lock down. Exactly. And, and I exactly. remember just being like, "How is it that we're in LA? If a, if my neighbor dies in LA, I won't even know about it." In New York, I could smell it in a week. So how is it that New York is not locked down? When right. It was crazy. And they were encouraging us to go out, you know, and and um, then, but and the worst thing was yet to come when Cuomo gave an order that wouldn't let the nursing homes turn away people who had coronavirus. And then exactly. people started dropping like flies in the nursing homes. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. other states didn't do that. It's not, it's not like other, and it's not a Republican Democratic thing because we talked about this on the show a bunch of times, but the mayor of San Francisco, um, London Breed, yeah, really left-wing mayor. She's been fantastic. 
Yeah. She had that city shut down even before they yeah. shut it down. She was warning people to get ready for the shutdown while while I, while our mayor was telling us to go oh. out and have a good time. She was telling people stay home as much as you can and let's see how this thing goes. You know, so, I actually I actually <laughs> met her. Schools were not closed soon enough. Nothing was closed. Go ahead, Cy. You met her. Yeah, I met her when I when I was with Dave Chappelle in San Francisco. She had just gotten elected. And she she walked into the dressing room and she said, the mayor's in the house, bitch. I was like, oh. <laughs> well, I was reading about her. She has an amazing story. She grew up in a house. Yeah. Project. Her older brother's in prison or something. She yeah, had a, like a that, hard, yeah. camera, tough background. And she got a master's degree in political science from a, one of the major universities in California. I don't remember. Yeah, so she, she was really she was cool. quite gifted. Yeah, she was really cool. Yeah, she I, I would she'd be a good choice for. Uh, well, she'll she'll definitely be a senator, I bet. But she she could be a good choice for vice president if she really rises, because she really called a lot of things for right this, for this run. <laughs> better than way better than Stacey. If if they're looking for like a, it's definitely gonna be a female. There's a lot of pressure to have a black female. I think she's a way better candidate than Stacey Abrams. I mean, she Why really. Why they, so? uh, no, I'm, aren't they talking about Pamela Harris as a, a VP for Biden? Yeah, thought, Kamala Harris. Yeah, Pamela, they yeah. Pamela. yeah. What yeah. do they say? Yeah. yeah, they talk about her. I, I don't think it'll be any of them, but but I this anyway, just this London breed really um caught my eye. She's really I'm just so impressed by the way she just applied good common sense to what was going on. You didn't need to be yeah. a scientist. Like, you know what? I see what's happening in China, I see what's happening in Italy. Let's just stay home right now. Let's wait yeah. for the dust to settle. We don't know what we're facing here. Yeah. Yeah. Because Washington got hit with it early too, though. So that probably helped in San Francisco, up in the Pacific Northwest. It was, I think in Washington, it was killing a bunch of old people up there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a heads up right there. Yeah, but we saw Washington. We New York, and we don't need. I mean, we're not located next to Washington. We heard the same thing on the news as she did. We didn't do shit in New York. Right. I guess there's so much money in New York. It's tough to hit the break immediately. You know what I mean? Like. It's the state of the Lord. New York's like, fuck it, too, dog. Like, New York's attitude is like, fuck it. So it's, it's yeah, like, that oh, ain't part of that's, it there. Is. that's there. It's not going to touch us, though. Come on, B. I, I remember I talking it. shit about coronavirus. Like, yeah, me too. Like week two of March. <laughs> talking top shit about it. You know what I mean? Week three, I was scared. But you know what I mean? It's just a couple days. You got to see somebody right. you will die. So let me ask you, because I ask this a lot. If you going around the, the the circuit here, if if we were open tomorrow at the Comedy Cellar, yeah, would yeah. you want to? Would you perform? Yes. yes. No. Yes. yes. I said would, no. I'll, I'll take I'll take no. Damien's spot. No problem. Damien, no. Damien, Damien, why not? If you. Oh, go ahead. Because we haven't figured it out yet. We haven't figured it out yet. I'm not doing the first. I'm not a guinea pig. I'll, I'll do, do it. Type of I'll do it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call y'all. See how the setup is. Yeah, I tell you. I'm gonna figure out. I'm figure out my travel. Yo, you know how <laughs> my travel you know, via Zoom. Listen, you know how every um, CVS now has the plastic in front of the register. Yeah. We just gotta put a booth around the stage at the cellar. <laughs> Wow. So, 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 yeah. so, so stand up comedy becomes the check cashing play. Yeah. You're yeah, just in, it's like you're in your shower. Yeah. I'll be, I'll, I'll be in my little booth. I'll also <laughs> serve chicken wings and fried rice if you want. <laughs> now, I'll tell you oh, what, I'll tell this, 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 this is the setup. This is setup. Everybody brings their own mic. Yeah. And yeah. Um, every, all the customers have to wear masks. Yeah. I'm uh, not sure yet about the, the comedians. I That's mean, I wear a mask in the, you know, when I walk in, when I go on stage, I'll take it off um, and then use my mic. And as soon as I'm done, I put it back on. Yeah. Okay, if, if, if it had those, if it had those precautions, I come, I come to the first show, see, do a guest so what? If you told me you were opening the same way, running shit the same way that you did before all this happened, I'd get an <laughs> antibody test tomorrow and I would do it. I don't care. Yeah, I'm like, I'm at the point right now where I'm like, yeah, I don't want to. I don't even if I die, I don't want to die stuck in my house. That's how I feel. Yo, my my wife, my wife has brought up a couple times, like, "Hey, should we move to like a bigger apartment?" I'm like, "We're ten minutes from the cellar. I can't move. I'm not <laughs> yeah. moving." So explain to yeah. me. Explain. Explain to the people at home. Maybe, what is it about doing comedy? Because if you listen to what you're saying, you don't get a lot of money at the cellar. 
you you don't you're, tell them that. No, go ahead. That's, like more than money. that's, that's okay. not what, that's obviously not what's motivating. Yeah. Well, that's not what's behind this urge to perform. Yeah. It's not like I, you know, I I, yeah. I want that spot pay. And and there is a risk to it, right? And still you're like, fuck it, I just can't wait. I want to do it. So what is it about doing comedy which is so compelling? First of all, uh not, not to be in people's money, but if you work the entire weekend at the cellar, you do make good money. I mean, yeah. That was before the virus. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, I'm just saying, people look at- with it, yeah. Yeah, people look at small comedy clubs, like, yeah, we get small pay, but on the weekend, and if you bouncing around the three different rooms you guys have, you could make a, a good amount of money. You're not gonna be rich, but you can make a good amount. But it's something, uh, it's not, there's a, there's stages everywhere in New York. Uh, the, the way you guys curate the room mm -hmm. and police it and the talent before you, after you, the camaraderie, the hanging out, it all leads to a great experience of why we all want to be at that club. Let's, but, go ahead, but, but just doing comedy, yeah. uh, I have, that's, my, me and my friend always get into this argument because he's always so upset and depressed. And he goes, why aren't you, you know, upset and depressed? How do you handle these things? And I said, because I have a creative outlet. I get to go on stage and blurt everything out where you don't have that. And I, I see the advantages we have of doing that and getting the laughter back is just, is a receipt, is payment. It's, it's, it's also it's the atmosphere and how you treat it and 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 the respect you get and and the feedback you get it's a whole package it's, it's also package. The yeah package. and i think also i the think comfort to have have you have your space to to flesh out what? your thoughts like the comfort to have your space and flesh out your thoughts and really dive into what you the conversation you want to have with people and connect with them in your way uh i always feel the most comfortable up there and it's like and 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 have to, to have a smart audience like the seller has like comedy wise and, and and just no jokes kind of ready for whatever and, and you just be able to like flesh out any fucking dumb idea you got or any smart idea or if you think it's smart whatever it is yeah. it's, it's kind of like or if you just had a hard fucking day and uh and you want to just come and let some steam off it it's that place that 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 got stripped away from our lives it's like yo it's hard to replace that shit with Zoom shows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that there's like a combination of the fact that you get that immediate um, feedback and that immediate feeling of like, okay, I'm on the right track. But then there's also this long-term goal. So you're getting, it's like, it, it infuses your life with this sense of like purpose. So you've got, you're building something bigger but you're working on it in pieces. And as you're working on it, you're getting this feedback of like, yes, you're on the right track. Yeah, you're, and, and it kind of infuses you with this like bigger vision that I, I like that combination in comedy. The fact that I can, I can get immediate feedback and um, immediate confidence from what I'm doing right now that gives me a sense of like purpose for the future that, that combination. I, I yeah. think that at the, at the cellar, the level of comics is so good, so high. And when you are embraced with those people that are so good at comedy and you get their approval and you are shoulder to shoulder with them, yeah. it builds up more confidence, it inspires you. Uh, um, yeah, a thousand then, percent. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that that's a, a huge um, plus that the seller has over other people. My, yeah. first, my first three spots at the seller, I, my audition was good. Then the next three spots I had, every time I had to follow Dave Attell, and I, I didn't bomb, but it was very close. Like the timer was on <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> and, yeah. and I had to go home and have a talk with myself and be like, bro, you can't, you, you're coming after, after David Tell, like you gotta bring it, you know what I mean? And that being around the greats helped me get better. It makes you yeah. greater. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Right. And I, 100%. Think, I think that that's the magic, the magic about the seller. 
Listen, yeah. I, appreciate, I appreciate that. I mean, Essie appreciates it, I'm sure, about the seller. Um, but uh, just to say that I, 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 I'm also extremely interested in just what makes a comedian tick because I, I, I can't believe it's all about just the seller. If, if the seller didn't exist, I think you'd be just as anxious to get on stage and perform at the, at the next best Yeah, club. but the, the original but, question was about the seller. That's why no, I was that. that. You, but yeah, I, I think, I mean, even to piggyback off of what Rosebud was saying, having something to build towards is a, is a, is a dope thing. Cause I think that's one thing that I was like in my head about, you know what I mean? Cause I was supposed to do my special now it's pushed back to like, I was supposed to do that shit like next month. Now it's pushed back to whenever shit gets going again. But it, it, it's, it's like being able to build towards something like writing jokes when this shit first started felt useless a little bit. Cause it's like, yeah. what the fuck am I writing for? Like it, who's going to see this in the way it needs to be formed, how I ever build it in the way I need to build it to make it what it is. And it's like, it's, it's that groundwork that mm -hmm. you do that validation, that build that, like that, that process that, that I, that I love and trust is kind of like fucked. With I, also, I also think comics have this sense, this like, um, there's like, every comic I've ever met is a little bit like detached from regular life. Like they're sort of observing their life while they're living it, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to figure it out. So especially during a time like this, when there's so much going on and there's so much to just like pick apart, it's driving me crazy to not be able to talk about it every night and, and get wrap my thoughts around it in a way that are, that's funny. It's right. like, I have so much to say right now and there's nowhere to say it except yeah. like YouTube, you know? Right. And that doesn't have the same, you're not getting feedback. Yeah. It's like no. checking for comments is like, and it's not, what am it's, I doing? Yeah, it's not or even funny. missing like bad comedy, missing, missing motherfuckers go up and not do it right. And, and but just still seeing how, yeah. people are thoughts, how people are having the conversation about the thing that they're going through, especially since we're all going through the same fucking shit in, in a way and you know, di all differently, but kind of in, in a similar way. So it's like, how, how, how's everybody else having a conversation? I, I, I miss <clears throat> the motherfuckers bomb. I miss, I, I miss watching motherfuckers kill. I miss all, all of it. All, all strings of it. Yeah. And I, I was always like an oddball amongst my friends. Like I always had weird thoughts and said weird things and would get little chuckles and laughs. And then even when I was on the radio, my, my little bits would be like to the left. And I didn't realize I was training myself to be a stand-up because now I could go on stage and say the, the crazy stuff that made people feel weird about me now make people laugh. Yeah. With me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know I always had that brain that would be good for stand-up be yeah. honest i just i like to hear people laugh i'm not gonna lie yeah, to you like for I mean, some real yeah, I mean. shit like yeah. i, I mean, like that's, the, that's the bottom line like yeah the, the, none of the sweetest sounds of life, of life is that said what would you say yes I, I said one of the sweetest sounds in life yeah. is laughter absolutely yeah. yeah so that that's I miss that the most, like, cause you know, not even that it validates the thought or whatever that that's for you to discern, but just that moment, that gathering, that shit, it feels like something. Yeah. I do think yeah, yeah. on a certain level, I do think this COVID, you know, the, as we coming back, I think that now that you got a decision to make, if you want to go to a club, I think now that the stakes are a little high, it brings it back to where comedy felt unsafe on a certain level or like real illicit, like anything could be said because we all kind of understand just from being out here, we are a little bit more daring than the people that's still in the crib, sheltering in place. You know what yeah. I mean? Like second, yeah. third wave people. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. going to be a little bit more of that energy here. Like, yo, you didn't have to be here, but you here. So let's make the most of that. I think there's going to be yeah. some of that. I am looking forward to seeing where the line is now with crowds, like on the road, in the city, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The shit what, you can what do you talk mean about. Line? The line, like, you know how there's always a line, like if you, if, if I say, if I, when I come back home to New York and I come to the club or wherever, like, there, there's, there's, there's a certain way you could talk in, in, in New York where you know you're gonna get a, like, where people are gonna be on a ride with you. Like, you can get a little dark, you can talk about like somebody who, who, who you lost like yesterday and motherfuckers will ride, will ride, ride right with you, but you can be in, fucking Orlando somewhere at a, at a club and they'll cringe, and, right? And, and they'll, yeah, and, and they'll cringe at, at even the thought of losing somebody because it's just like the just like the standard of life and, and how dark they're willing to go. But now I feel I feel like everybody's been met at a certain level where where the lines got kind of been pushed for everybody. So it'll be interesting to get back on the road and be like, 
I, how do people in Utah really feel? Do, do they cringe at the same shit? Like, like what, what yeah. is the crowd? You know what I mean? What does the crowd feel like? Like, but, but yeah. Chris, yeah. you, it's a little bit a common knowledge when you talk about death and, and the dark side of life. Um, a lot of people, when they go to comedy club, they don't want to think about it. They want to get away from it. So if they cringe, of course, yeah. they sort of understand why. But if you can talk about something and somehow turn it around and make it amusing, interesting, and not so dark, then you'll be fine. You can talk about anything that way. Yeah, but, but sometimes you think it'd be dark. Though, right? up, people are gonna think that you are disrespectful if you talk about just that. Right. Yeah, some people do. Some be like I tell people all the time, nothing can offend me. I don't get offended at anything. You could talk about anything. Saifa, you, you are one of the most easiest going people I know. Always a smile on your face, always a positive attitude. I just love you. I just, I, it wasn't. It wasn't always like that, though. When I was younger. But Cipher, the way I he can do a show in two o'clock in the afternoon, three o'clock in the morning, six p.m. Same thing. I, because <laughs> when I was younger, I saw the other side of it, and I did. I I said, "There's no point in life and living like this." Like. I'm depressed. I get depressed too, but I know how to check it. It's not that you, you, you decide that it's a character. There's some people, Kevin Brennan could not train himself no. No. like that. No. You know what I mean? That no, it's a character. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's who you are. Yeah. Well, thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. And <laughs> I've never seen him get, get offended uh, or heckler or whatever. He never, oh, no. you know, no, so I don't somebody care asked me explode and walk off the stage not him no, no i don't care about that's that. such a great characteristic about you it's all it's about oh, i don't take uh, anything personal we just got we just got a message something i'll bring it up on the screen i don't know uh i don't know what to say about it um is it kevin brennan tv fades fearing the end of comedy central the network that made the chris and dave Chappelle, Stephen Colbert, and amy schumer has laid off top executives while looking to make shows that are cheaper to produce. What well, I don't see the date here. No, I heard about I that. I mean, it had to be like yeah, two weeks ago, like last week. Yeah. 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 Yesterday. Mm. Well, they canceled. Oh, they were our late show. on that article. Yeah, they are. Whoever wrote that <laughs> shit took a long time. They had they had to be already struggling before this, right? Like this is like an excuse. Yeah. Like they caught a they caught a break with Corona. No, they were. I think that was going to happen, Corona or not. I think that no, I know, that's what I'm saying, but they now they have like the excuse to of why they had to let who people was, go. Who was let go? Did they say names? Like a bunch of a bunch of folks. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, canceled, they, they canceled this week at the comedy cell rusty. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Damn. They, Don't they, mess with the comedy seller, any form, anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's um well I know that Anne is gone yeah. and um I mean, pretty much, pretty much everyone except for like there's six people I think that are still there. Yeah, Ryan. but everyone else. Yeah. Well, Ryan's, Ryan's still there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know Anne. any of these people. Ryan, Ryan. Ryan Kelsey. <laughs> it's fucked it's, up. Uh, you know? you it's hate sad. to see anybody lose their job. You no, know? I don't. Yeah. Corporate wise, yeah, but, but things will work corporate, out. Corporate yeah. America, your job is never secure. Right. Yeah. I right. don't care which, you know, your, your Comedy Central, Netflix, right. Netflix, any of those big companies, your job is not secure. Yeah. yeah. Any moment. Is good as long as you have the connection and they like you. I mean, right. Ann Harris got fired? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. La right. Laid off. I mean, it, it's like one of those things, it's sad because I feel like they uh, were one of the networks that really, really cared about developing comics. Right. You know, like they would take talent that that nobody knew about and they would try to build them up. And I think now what they're trying to do is like, I mean, ever since that, I think they merged with like, CBS. they merged with some, yeah. No and now they're trying to do more like MTV stuff or like, just like, like, it's not going to be the stand up. I don't 
think is what they're going to be doing anymore. Yeah, I don't I remember know what a few years ago, my fr a friend of mine worked in the Viacom system and the guys who ran MTV kind of took over the whole thing. So you can see how their influence is now making the shows where they're not a hundred percent comedy based the way we like it. Right. Yeah. I mean, but all they really yeah, had to I do was that, like let but, their shows be available, like, like online, and it could have truly just saved the entire network if they just yeah let people consume it for free. Yeah, their platform was hard to yeah, use. That's what I was, about, I was about to say. I think that, and, and then Saturday Night Live may be an exception to this. I hope it is. It, it seems to be so far. Um, there's not that much market for scheduled content anymore, unless it's like pro sports or SNL's live, and SNL's really like cutting edge. Uh, on the current events maybe but people want to watch shit when they want to watch it yeah. and they don't want commercials and it's got to be extremely compelling and unique yeah. to get somebody to tune in and yeah and comedy central from the very beginning they made this mistake kind of like apple versus microsoft they they kept everything really stingy and difficult to stream and you had to sit through the ads you couldn't skip it, it was, yeah. and and it's like fuck it I, you know there's so much shit for free everywhere yeah but, People moved on. I think. I mean, yeah. I had a I had a special on there, and and I had to, I had to try to teach my 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 sixty five year old uncle how to how to how to get past the pay gate so he could see it. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah. Just got a computer. Yeah. At that point, you're like, hey, like, uncle, just fuck. watch something else. You're yeah, like, man. <laughs> I'll just talk to you for thirty minutes, bro. You ain't even gotta do this. You yeah, I'll just do it. do it for you over. Hey, hey, time. Chris. Hey Chris, can you just do it live? Cause I can't, I can't get on my <laughs> iPad. I, I turned it on, I can't see. So just talk to me. Hey, we're almost out of time, but Rosebud, I have a question for you. You know, you don't have to answer it, but um, so Rosebud comes from like Republican Party royalty. Her father. Oh, here we go. No, no, here oh, we go. Her grandfather. Oh, baka, 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 her grandfather baka. was the Secretary of State, uh, right. James Baker. He made a few. You know comments about Israel and the Jews, but but, that, but anyway, that's beside the point. But uh, no, no, but uh, no, and and you know we're living in a time now when people are so judgmental about other people and whether there could be a good possibly be a good person uh, based on their politics. And obviously, you must have grown up around people that you think are decent and good, and they were also Republicans. So so how do you answer that when you hear such scorn heaped on the people that you grew up with and that you well i never i never really well i'm I, reading i'm reading her facial expressions like, gnome or or we could just like, not talk about it but i'm really no, interested no, no, in that's, it I'm, I'm happy to talk about it that's but it's assuming a lot that i think that the people who raised me were like <laughs> uh good yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's sad that's let's talk happened. about that then <laughs> here's the thing you know like most people they grow up and you know they they refer to their grandfather as like pawpaw or like gramps or pops and i was introduced as an infant to my grandfather as the chief <laughs> like i was i had half a brain and they were like, you will refer to great. him as his White House staff position. <laughs> so like, I don't, um, it wasn't, it, you, you don't come from, when you come from a family like mine, it's not like a tightly knit family. You know what I mean? Like I have my grandfather's uh, secretary's email. That's, that's the vibe. Do you know? Wow. It's, it's like, um, have you, you watched Succession? Yes. They're right about Republicans. Yeah, have you watched <laughs> Succession no. yet? No. Um, I, that's the show I binge when we first went into quarantine. So, it's so I good. When I watch that show, I just go, holy fuck, like they got it right. Because really? when I, like my uncles and my dad, I remember being at like a, uh, a family reunion and we were in this gorgeous hotel and we, they rented out like a whole back like ballroom for the family to have like a dinner and I was bringing all the grandkids in I went to go get all the grandkids to like bring them in and I peeked in the door and my uncles were swinging fists across the table because one of them made my grandfather laugh at the expense of the other mm. and that <laughs> is a hundred percent the family, like that's my dad's side of the family is that. It's like crazy mean to each other and not like, <laughs> not 
it isn't, it's funny when I retell it, but when you're there, it's, you're like, oh my God, like these people have everything that they could want and they're miserable. And I, uh, and I just like, so I don't, you know, when people are like, oh, your grandfather, this, that, and the other, I go like, yeah, you might be right. I mean, I, I don't, um, I think he's, I think he was a smart, like, guy when it comes to politics. Like, he was smart about it. Um, He was more of a statesman than the people that he was surrounded by. But I, I don't pretend that he didn't do the things that you need to do to be a successful politician, which is lie, cheat, and steal. Mm. That's like, those are the things that people do in politics, you know? And uh, I don't like, I don't take responsibility for my family. I don't like, you know, I'm not, I'm from them, but I'm not theirs. You have a bad relationship with your father? Yeah. What about your your mom? Uh, My mom and I get along really well. My mom's a painter. Are they still married? Of course not. Oh, no, no. Escape. she campaigned for Obama the second they divorced. So, <laughs> that true? Yeah. That's if awesome. That, <laughs> if that makes, uh, yeah. It's like two totally different sides. Uh, my mom is like a painter who's from like Connecticut and she's like a sweet, she like cries if the sky is pretty. And, um, <laughs> oh, man. and then oh, like Saifa. Dad- is, Ava, is Ava you mom? No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, and my dad's like this, he's like um, insanely just like, I think he's the reason I'm funny, but he's insanely cold. Like, not a nice guy, but very Wait. funny. Like, he doesn't mean to be funny, but he's really funny. Are you cold? I think on stage, I'm a little, yeah. I, I think I'm a little like, well, like is when that I, a shield, Rosebud? That's like a shield protecting yourself. I yeah yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't. I've hanged out with you enough times to 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 say you are not a cold person. No, I've been on the road with her. She's frozen. <laughs> is she cold? Sci-fi. Is she cold? She's frozen inside. Frozen. No, no, but not. she no, but that I love Rose, but she's very sweet. If you're with her like if you're down with her but outsiders nah they can't they can't fuck with rosebud i think i'm like i'm like a kind person but i'm not a nice person if that That's makes sense great yeah. way to explain it like i'm oh. not i'm kind and i'll do a kind it's thing but I'm not in a nice I had, way i had yeah. you wrong i had you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> i think my face back. my face is very misleading because it's like you know yeah. and then doris day yeah, yeah. Oh, that yeah. was a great. That's a great. I asked because that was an awesome. That was an awesome uh, answer. Answer. And that was no, I knew that because uh, Rosa and myself had a conversation about it. And yeah, we had a long talk. Yeah, and she ex- expressed how uh, disconnected from the grandfather and father she she felt. Did you ever meet any of the presidents? Yep. Yeah. Who'd you meet? Yeah, I met George Bush. I met. Uh, Reagan, although I don't remember it. I Bush, met Bush, the, the father or the son, H.W. Bush or, or H.W.N.W. H.W.N.W. So Do you I met all? all the Bushes. Like I, we've been to the, we've been to like Guinea Bumfort. Now yeah. that's a, that's a very warm family. Actually, you can see that's a warm family. The dad was always crying and they're always very loving. Yeah. To each other in public. Yeah, they are. That? They are very sweet. I think, um, but I also feel like you the dynamics in a family uh especially a political family what you see is not what What you get you get yeah you know uh it's they're very especially with their families they have to present a certain way and uh but if you dig not even you don't have to dig that deep to find the shit in any political family you it's like we're all riddled with the same things that other families are riddled with. Like, you know, it's there's toxic dynamics, especially and in political families, power dynamics are major. Huge. Did you ever, did you ever meet any Bin Ladens? <laughs> no. Yeah. Bin Ladens? No, but 
Like the but good ones. I got, I remember the good I was ones. given. Not Osama, but the other ones. Well, I was given um something from the Corcoran. I was given something from the Corcoran group, which is, uh, it was like, I remember my dad giving me this mug from the Corcoran group and then watching a 9-11 documentary and the Corcoran <laughs> group being like, and I was like, I'm going to throw this mug out now. You guys, you guys swag from the Corcoran yeah. group? Oh, yeah, man. I was just like, whoops. I'm standing there with like a towel and my sweatshirt, Corcoran group, just like, oh. Let, so, right. let me ask you, uh, are you and Andy politically think alike? Andy is a comedian. Andy Hayes, so she's engaged too, so everybody knows. Go ahead. Yeah. Andy yeah. Hayes, yeah. 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 Andy's a little more, he's like left leaning. He's very left leaning. I'm very much like, I feel like both sides, especially now, are, they've sort of lost their way. So I don't really identify as either, either one. And, um, but yeah, we, we see eye to eye on most stuff. Like he likes to watch the news and like believe the news all the time. And I, I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> oh, Andy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, all right. Um, but I don't, I, I believe SNL, uh, uh, news. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> I, get, I get, yo, you know what I miss? Um, so Michael much? Che and Colin. Yeah. You should get, by the way, from them. Uh, um, they talk about shit though. It, it's Chris, awesome. the first one that they did the uh, SNL at home, when uh, uh, Che roped Colin into reading the joke, yeah. it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I good. Love it. I love that it. was so great. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 He's, He's walking right into so the good. So yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> I miss. I, we, we usually wrap it up in an hour. This is the time of night where I have to read my kids Harry Potter. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm just saying I miss. I miss hanging out at the cellar and listening to Gnome speak to one of his friends about things that go on in the world, and then repeat that what I heard for a week for another whole week later, so I can sound smart. <laughs> By the way, I'll tell you this. I appreciate that, Cypher. Just in case you want to, SD, I can tell you, I'm I'm very pessimistic about Comedy Cellar Vegas opening up again because it occurs to oh, me. Oh, you shouldn't oh, be. Oh, man. Oh. Well, let we, me tell you. We worked so hard to get a name. We let have me tell you why. Huh? Let me tell you why. Because okay. I don't, because I, the Rio Casino is all, was already hanging by a thread. Yeah. And yeah, uh, it, it. It, it, you need a certain base amount of business to make it worthwhile to even open the doors. And I'm wondering if they're going to open the doors. Well, we're going to move it, no. We're yeah, going to move it right. to another casino. You could do that for sure. Yeah, that's possible. Another casino or maybe stand by yourself. Yeah, oh, hell no. Comedy seller, no? I mean, I, I don't, if you want to run it, maybe Izzy wants to run it. I'm not, I'll I'm go. Not I'm not worried. The thing about running a, a store by itself is that you got to do the liquor inventory. You got to make sure nobody's stealing. You got to yeah. get security. You got to make sure the floors are clean. You got to make sure the liquor is ordered properly. Yeah. The air conditioning oh, breaks. When you're in the nice thing about a casino is they do everything. We don't have to worry about that stuff. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be But bothered. listen, the Caesars, the Caesars have other, other, um, Hotels and, yeah. and and clubs. You could be right because other places may go out of business, and maybe they'll maybe though an opportunity will arise. But we're gonna figure it out. No, Comedy Cellar Vegas is in the in the books. We'll see. Really? Well, that's too bad. I, I hope you guys open it again. That's no. that would be yeah. Yeah, I hope it, so too. But we're gonna do it bigger and better. Yeah, Cipher was a Cipher was a big help to us. He he flew out there the first um the for opening night and you did all those shows and you know he was the best yeah. so we really appreciated that so i got so mma cool. fighters to go i got some basketball okay. players to go <laughs> type is like a guardian angel for the comedy seller in the last five years we really appreciate <laughs> it. Oh, really it's true. it's true no but he means the guardian angels with the red berets on the subway <laughs> <laughs> Sapphire is our Curtis Sliver. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, listen, it was, it was good a seeing everybody. Be it's safe, great. everybody. Don't guys. take unnecessary chances, okay? Good, good night. night. All you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.